Yeah, there is a buzz going on. It's pretty bad. So adjust this to where you can hear it properly. Okay. Talk to him. All right. Hey, I, I got to start the show. It's okay, just, sure. oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Here's the theme song. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. It's been over one long year Watching movies bad, strange and weird Commandeer By Michael Hi, this is Carl I'm Mike's friend I I wrote this song My turn on are French poodles Chinese German strudels. You should follow me on Twitter. It's Jokes to Carl. Uh, that's the French duh, not the <laughs> duh, duh. Now let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Michael. 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 Wait, what's that? Voices in my head. What are you saying to me? Wait, what's that? Yeah. Mike. Okay, I must. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Let's Watch a Full Length Movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman and Carl and Annoying Buzzing Noise. Uh, we are doing this live here at MuniRadio.fm. Uh, and Carl, great to have you here, sir. Hey, thank you, Michael. Good to be with you. Thank you, Buzz Annoying Buzzing Noise. Good well, we have, have a great show. We have a great show uh, that Buzzing Noise will definitely appreciate. Uh, we watch a full-length movie on YouTube, and you check out our podcast out on LWAFLMOYT, as it's known on iTunes. Or you can also go to Let's Watch a Full-Length Movie on YouTube.blogspot.com. Just recently updated uh, to see the uh, movie and hear the podcast, both embedded, and that's how we want you to do it. We want you to watch the movie and listen to the podcast at the same time. Carl, what's the movie today? Today we are watching Dance Hall Racket, 1953. It's a Lenny Bruce film. You can search for Dance Hall Racket, right, uh, yes. parentheses 1953, close parentheses. It says Lenny Bruce crime noir. I don't know Ooh. if it's really noir. Is Broken it, it... Trout is the, is the person who shared this. Okay. Broken Trout. Morgan Trout. Okay, let me hang on a sec. I got Dance Hall Rackets. Fish. Oh, hang on. I typed, uh, I have Dance Hall style. There we go. Dance Hall Rackets. Broken Trout. Okay, I see it. Lenny Bruce Crime Noir compared to a Lenny Bruce Romantic Comedy. I'm going to click the link and then I'm going to hit pause. Let it buffer. Let it buffer. Let it suffer. And now, then... I don't know if we'll have a guest with us today, but that's the buzz. <laughs> We want to thank uh, Montclair's second man on the moon to be here, Buzz Aldrin. Patty, Patty so tell me a story. You know, you're coming in and out over the phone line. I don't know about on the air, but you're. Um, if I sound a little disconnected, I might miss some things you're saying as you. You know what? Maybe we should do the other phone line. Can we try that? Here, can you pass my phone? Okay. Over do here? I call back? Uh, yeah. Here, I'll. Uh, okay. So once again, search for dance hall racket. Parentheses, 1953, and it's Lenny Bruce Crime so Noir. You can leave off Crime Noir because I disagree. And Broken Trout. So is the publisher. Okay, I'll call you right. All right, call me back. We'll we'll try this out. We're here with Paul in the studio. Uh, Paul, we're gonna try our countdown doing countdown man. Our countdown man. We're Tell gonna. Tell me tr- where he sounds at least right here, please. Oh, so Peter, are you still talking there, Carl? He's off the phone. Oh, there we go. He just called. Did he? Carl? Yes. All right. Uh, okay. I, I, why don't we just go? Do you hear it? Okay. All right. Let's do it. So, uh, Paul, can you help me with the countdown, sir? Sure. I'd be glad to before I take that off there. All right. All right, guys. Get your finger hovering above. Hopefully, you've let it buffer in three, two, one, go. 
All right. Oh, mine's on. Ah, the... This is, they go right to it. And there's a silhouette you of a. You see the dancing. girl up there, right? Yeah. Let the exploitation begin. We promise you girls. Original story and screenplay by Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. Now, Mike, I just want to let you know that all the things that made Lenny Bruce great, that made him controversial, that made him edgy, and uh -huh. made him funny, are not in this movie. Oh, okay. The, none He's of the just, charm. What about the no. ranting incoherentness? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. It's close captioning. Impressed with this movie, I listened to a lot of Lenny Bruce, and I didn't need to do that, apparently, because it's just not in here. And he was hard to understand lots of times. Yeah, I think he was more like, he must have been amazing live. Like to be in the heat of the moment with this guy. Like he was a really hip guy for his age, and he was saying all these slang words, and he was doing mumbling. Well, we're at the dance hall. Can you tell me what a dance hall is? Because I'm, uh, yeah. Was, yeah. So this is, it's called like a taxi dance. What you do is you go and you you spend you pay money to dance with the pretty girl, and this was uh, uh, lots of sailors in the movie. Lots of sailors frequent this particular one. Now, at the beginning of the movie, what we saw was a cop sitting with a guy who was interviewing him for the paper, oh, and he goes, "You might like to know about the dance hall racket." Because you, and so you we're just, here in a flashback. You can't just have the crime up front. You have to preface it with a fucking chaplain. And a rabbi, and they're talking to Jesus about how uh, the following uh, message is bad, and you should be. These guys all went to jail. You know, it looks like so fun. this guy's making an announcement that there'll be some sort of sailor dance, and go frequent the bar because they need your money. <laughs> Christ, Mr. Scally wants you should enjoy yourselves and bring all the friends you have. That's all. Now go get a drink. The bar needs the money. I can't you believe that guy is opening fucking politics. Am I right, Carl? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> There's only one stand-up comedian who appears in this uh, film, and he really looks like, um, to me, he looks like uh, Stan. What's it? Laurel and Hardy, right? Right. Which one? Yeah, yeah. Stan Laurel. Is that it? Let me see. Ha, uh, Abbott. There he um, it's Abbott. Oh, uh, no. Abbott and Costello. Lucas. So this is, I think, okay, this his is whole great. running shtick is he's going to steal drinks. What, the guy with the hat? Yeah. Now, this is Umberto. Oh, hey, look, that's he Lenny is, Bruce. That is Lenny Bruce. That's Vincent. He plays the thug. I'm oh. going. There's two thugs. There's Vincent and there's Ice Pick, and they work for Umberto. Oh, here comes uh, Laurel. Oh. Hardy. Oh, I see. They're going to the hat guy. Yeah, he looks like Stan yeah. Laurel, right? But he does the thing with his face, too. Oh, and he's stealing a yeah. drink. His name's Bernie Jones, and his character's name is Punchy. Now, he was a stand up comedian, and he gets to do one of his routines in the movie. Oh, cool. Uh, well, you know, that, that but, guy, he just took a drink behind the bar, and I, I hate to admit it, Carl, but I, I, I'm his sponsor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> Okay, now this uh, woman is saying for a little bit of money, she'll go on a trip to Hawaii. Oh. And you're like, what? A trip to Hawaii? What's she even talking about? Is that like, uh, ooh, that's just like fourth base. <laughs> now he's like, what does that mean, a trip to Hawaii? Yeah, what do you want to do <laughs> with her? <laughs> My God. They're the... going to go to Hawaii. She should not be wearing that dress next to the tablecloth. I mean, uh, the yeah, table, the classic. table, and the herb should, should have talked before coming to the restaurant together. <laughs> oh, look at that! They're so, literally kissing behind the bushes. Yeah, it's it's a palm tree of Hawaii. And you oh, that's where there. Hawaii is. Gotcha. Yeah, my coconuts. <laughs> oh, I had a little Pepsi. So, here. this is Umberto Scali, and he is. Pretty much the best actor in the whole thing, you know. Uh, his name's Timothy. F no, what is his name? Let's see if we can hear him. Let me just look. Here. 
Well, there's... Hey, that's pretty true. That's what they call a man's best friend. Hey, that's... Hey, it's he hid diamonds too, up, the, up the dog's ears. That's how he smuggled them. Do you, do you know Mort Saul? I know, yes, that's a comedian. When I was researching for this, I was using Pandora for Lenny Bruce channel, and, and Mort Saul used, came up a lot. Yeah, well, they're contemporaries. He's still alive in 90, and he performs in uh, Mill Valley, and which uh -huh. they broadcast on Facebook Live. And this Tuesday, he talked a little bit about Bill Cosby. But honestly, have you ever heard a nine-year-old speak? A nine, 90-year-old? Yeah. yeah, in my life. It takes some patience. But yeah. but yeah, he was just, I don't know, he was talking about uh, I Spy, I guess. Oh, the film, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the TV show with, with Bill Cosby. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Not, oh, I mean, not the I movie with film, Owen but... Wilson and Eddie Murphy. All right, so they're, what are they doing at the dance hall office? Okay, that... so the dance hall is really a cover for these diamond smugglers, okay? <sighs> Again so with the diamonds. It's drugs, He buddy. came up with the dog, used it to smuggle the diamonds. That's a wife, by the way. That's Lenny Bruce's wife. Her oh. name's Honey. And um, uh, there's, our, there's our goofy punchy. Uh, and he goes, here's $5,000. And it's like, you know it's worth a lot more than that. It's like, well, how much is your life worth to you? <laughs> so he goes, okay, I'll take $5,000. We're watching the dance hall in action. There's some men pay to dance with ladies. Mm-hmm. Okay. This was a very common practice in the 40s. But this movie is 1953. You go to a dance hall and you pay money to... And then you you would punch a card. There was the original sandwich card, right? Ten dances. Well, and I, I don't know, but in this movie, they sell tickets. So it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like you're talking about the same sort of thing. And he's just he's reading the paper like Mort Saul. Can you believe this, Khrushchev? <laughs> <laughs> Mort Saul was famous for showing up with a newspaper and just reading from it. But it's cool. You should check out the, his Facebook. Mort Saul says is his media handle, and uh, Mort Saul. Holly is oh, she stealing just took the wallet. his wallet. Hey, look, it's Gilbert Gottfried. It is right. Yeah, little pug knows. Now look, she's roughing up Holly. Oh, well while, while the thug is having a drink behind him. See? Do your job. You got one job, thug. Uh oh, he's gonna burn she's her. Putting a cigarette out on her. Oh, and I better act. Like, hey! Uh -oh. Lenny Bruce is I gonna get knife. violent. Oh, take it's that a, shoulder. Uh, oh. Have a bloodless death. Boom, he's already dead. Wow, Holly that was says, simply by slapping you. his uh palm against the guy's shoulder. Is that a karate he, move? He did a, yeah, he gave him the Vulcan kill grip. <laughs> that wasn't even Vulcan. Spock's like, now, yeah, we'll let it slide. They're lying to Punchy saying, Punchy, old man, he's just he's just drunk and sleeping. Yeah, yeah right. see? Yeah, he's, he's unconscious in our club. He drank too much, that's all. And Punchy's going, it's okay, I took the dog home and I'll just hold on to him. No problem. <laughs> Is that yeah, how Punchy talks? Yeah, the dog, yeah. Is he a palooka? Is that why you call him Punchy? That's why. Uh, I don't know. That his name is Punchy. Now, oh. Umberto's like, you idiot. Why did you kill him? <laughs> I didn't want you to kill him. He goes, Wait, boss, he, you told me to kill him. It's you're fucking, not here inside the club, you dummy. He's not dead. He's just sleeping. He really killed him with that, that hand slap on his shoulder? Yeah. It was a knife. There was a knife. Oh, it was a knife. Really? Yeah, it's a bloodless death, right? And it took two seconds. <laughs> Boom, he's dead. Like death itself. Oh, you're on my desk, lady. Fortuna. Her name's left her a cigarette. So she's a dance hall, uh, or E, and he's a dance hall. Uh, she, uh, I don't remember. Her name is Maxine. I don't remember what they're talking about right now. Um, do you, uh, no, oh, let me, I'll, I'll raise the volume. Will okay, you marry me? But let's don't talk about him. What shall we talk about? 
the last PTA meeting you attended? What do you say things like that for? How was that last PTA meeting you attended? <laughs> what she's doing is saying, I'm not going to marry you because you're a criminal, criminal, criminal. Oh, he's not the PTA life. No, yeah. He's, he's not more the GTA, PTA type. Right? GTA life. Then he goes, look, this guy's getting out of jail, and I'm going to get 250 grand off of him, and then we can, you know... And then she changes her tune, like, oh, I always thought you were handsome. It's dumb. This whole film is stupid. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look that entertaining. Uh, racketeer. Get- I was actually, actually going to watch this movie, because I figured if we mm-hmm. both seen it, then we could kind of just hit the good points. But I never got around to it, so we'll have to just sit and watch this movie in real time. Yeah, it's... Um- only an hour, so we don't really need to do that. I'll just let you know some stuff. This okay. came out February 20, 1953, and it was shot in Hollywood, Los Angeles, and um, directed guy, by this guy named Phil Tucker, who really sucked. He was known best known for Robot Monster. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, one and of the greatest no movies ever made. Blue had a frame of shot. Have you ever seen Robert, uh, Robot Monster? No, but it's sold as uh, one of the worst uh, movies ever. Now he had a mental breakdown because he didn't get his money out of out of um, Robot Monster, even though it had very healthy profits apparently. And um, he, he, coming off of that mental breakdown is when he made this movie. <laughs> so I mean, I'm not laughing at his mental breakdown, God forbid, but uh, <laughs> it is nice to know that in 1952, when he thought of this movie, that dance halls would be the first thing he thought of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, this is really, you see, um, it's, it's all, it's all uh, uh, Lenny here. I mean, Lenny's got a stripper wife. Lenny's got a stripper mother in real life. So he knows from dance halls. Now, dance halls were becoming few and far between in 1953, the you know, Internet tells me. And so he was trying to sort of pay homage. Gotcha. Well, there were billiard yards, billiard halls, I guess. Sure. Uh, pool halls. And, uh, well, I mean, nowadays we have foot massages. You know, the, like, anytime you're walking around the city and your feet hurt, you can just go mm-hmm. into a foot massage place. It's usually like a career garage or uh, a storefront, you know. Um, and they have the same picture. You know it's a foot massage place because there's this woman who's like, thank you for massaging my foot. Uh-huh. A- and it's great. You don't have to dance. <laughs> One time I went to this foot massage place and the lady was like, do you want happy ending? And I said, oh, um, I guess. And she goes, a tickle, tickle, tickle. A tickle, tickle, tickle. She tickled your foot. <laughs> okay, well, you had to be there. You had to be there? <laughs> now, Umberto is scolding Vincent. You're being a hothead. You and sure she didn't say? Yelled at. You sure she didn't say, then the prince kissed Sleeping Beauty? And she woke up, and they got married and lived happily ever after the end. Now, Holly's pretty, right? That's his wife right there? got a pretty wife. Yes, pretty wife. That's his wife. Yeah, great hair. Stick with me, baby. I'll put you in a trashy grindhouse theater film. You'll be acting in no time. Uh, Oh, that's to say you'll be not acting in no time. Yeah, you'll be not. You'll be bad acting. In no time. In no time. So... Back then, of course, I mean, it's dumb to even say there was no internet. There wasn't, but there wasn't television, okay? So what to do with your day, one of the things you could do is go to a grindhouse. And it was a movie theater that had exploitation movies, just sex and drugs and violence, stuff like that. Lots of drinking, uh, gambling, wrestling ticks. It was just exploitation Anything that made it, you sit up and go, whoa, did you see how he smacked that guy in the face? Look at that rack on that broad. <laughs> what else did they say so back in the 1950s? that's what a grindhouse was, and that's why this guy got to make a movie, and only one hour. You know, oh, they're making, They they're didn't kissing. even care about that. Well, they would show it with another feature. Well, 1953 was a big TV year. That's why 3D movies, as the story goes, came to theaters because no, you had to experience it in the theater. And again, you... There still wasn't... TV, yeah. In 1953? 53. 53, yeah. It was. Okay, so maybe there was, and only the richest people had. 
the internet says that this was the last few years of the grindhouse because TV was soon to come. So maybe people did have TVs, but not everybody, something right. like that. Well, it's ironic because they would not show a film like this. You would have to go to the theater. And then at some point during TV's history, this film must – do you think this TV show, this movie ever aired on TV? I would doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> like on the Late Late Show? Um, okay, so these are the cops. And what they're saying is, look at these diamonds. You see, we're no fool. We know that they're not just selling dance tickets there. They're smuggling diamonds. God, so the what? guy on the right, he's, they're saying, we want you to go in there. G, you're, he's a visiting G-man, apparently. And pretend that you're, you know, a slime ball. And get we, to know these guys. Girl, we and must... uh, try to uncover the caper. We watched last week uh, I, the Jury, also from 1953, and that was also diamond smuggling. Yeah, but, but you know, they they swapped out diamond smuggling because it was drugs, as you recall. Yeah, I do recall you, you mentioned that. So what do you think the story here? Do you think it's really diamond smuggling, or is it supposed to be like yeah, heroin? Yeah, because, yeah, you see, I, the Jury was a Hollywood movie, and they were going to the – a motion picture association of America to get rated. And they said, sure, we'll give you a PG rating, but you've got to change some things. Um, I don't know if it actually is, was G R and PG back then, but they said, look, we'll approve your film if you change some stuff. And that was one of them. Oh, those uh, are the famous tickets. Those are the famous tickets. That's <laughs> close up of the uh, ticket holder. Ms. And Bruce. there's our, our comedian friend, punchy who, Seems to be in every goddamn scene. He's like, uh, is he playing drunk? Is that his gig? Uh, yes, he plays a, he's a Swedish drunk. <laughs> now, here's our undercover cop. Hello, Square. beautiful. Yeah, I have How the ticket. Let me dance. Cha cha cha. Two, three, four. Dance here <laughs> often? Yes, I'm a dance hall girl. Oh, <laughs> Your shoulder smells nice. I hope nice. you dance. You have a nice now, smelling think, shoulder. Yes, it smells yeah. like 52 guys who danced before you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. At the beginning of the night, she smells great. She smells all perfumed up. And at the end of the night, she smells like beer. <laughs> Cigarettes. <laughs> oh, can you smoke when you dance with a dance hall girl? I don't know. It's Dime a Dance. Okay, so now we see the dressing room, and the only reason we're in here is Hello. to see nakedness. You see her butt? Yeah, totally. And her tits. That was wow, seriously racist. You, you don't see naked boobs in this film, but the way you just saw her butt, yeah. that was really racy. Oh, absolutely. And this film was what? How many years ago? 70 years ago? 53, right? Yeah. So 47 Five. years to get to 2000. 57, yeah. 66. 65, I don't know. Wow. A long time. Long time. So now we're going to meet, this is the new girl. And now Lenny Bruce's mother is going to come in and give her a little talk. Like, oh, I've been around the block. Now you this is really Lenny me, Bruce's honey. mother, her famous mother? This is Lenny Bruce's famous mother. Oh, a new girl. Oh, new girl. Wow. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What's your name? Dottie. What you want to get in this racket? Well, I work in a real estate office, and boy... Oh, stop. You're killing me. Sally Marr. Well, then I work in a Sally dime Mar store. Oh, yes, I know. The boss it's made the a mother of Lenny here. Bruce, so I guess Mr. I Bruce know. disappeared. I used to work after in a dime store myself. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. What about... And his wife what is, happened? uh... What happened? I made um, a pass at the boss. <laughs> Did you get fired? No, I... Holly Bruce, she took his name. She's telling it like it is. There she is. Look at her. Oh, I know the author, you know. <laughs> My son, the screenwriter. Listen to her. Wah, 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 voice. Oh, right, let's take a listen. I'll hear him beeping. Listen, what guys once took me to a restaurant and asked me to have a cup of coffee. And I said, don't they serve anything in this restaurant but coffee? And you know something? He almost passed right out on the stool. That wow, that. what do you know? True story, I tell you. His <laughs> stool, huh? Wow. A guy gave me a diamond ring. And I didn't even have to kiss him. What a jack. <laughs> 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 
wah, wah. Now she, uh, the one on the left, yeah. just showed us her butt, and right. that's the most we're going to see in this film. She showed us her butt, butt and then she sits down on a chair and listens to the <laughs> Lenny Bruce's right. mom talk for an hour. Why does she talk? Why does she stand while she listens? Back at the dance hall. So you get to touch the woman's dance. back, right? And then you rub against What's her while you dance? Is that the idea? I don't know. I see crotches. I don't know if the crotches are touching, but they sure look like. Yeah, that's all I've been looking at. And this is really rock and roll music, if you ask me. It's like, like, I guess it's not rock and roll music. I mean... It's dry humping to Looney Tunes music. Hi, I'm Punchy, see? Hey, how about buying me a drink? Hey, I thought they threw you out of here. Oh, no, no, I bought some more tickets. I bet I can make you buy me a drink. How much you bet? Okay, I bet well, you I, this dollar. is supposed to be a funny joke. Check All it right. out. All right. I like I'll tell you a story, and then I get through the story. If you don't buy me a drink, I owe you a drink. Uh, okay? Classic bar trick. Okay. All right. Well, once upon a time, I was hunting lions deep in the heart of Africa. And about three o'clock in the afternoon, my guide was eaten up by a leopard. Yeah? Then about an hour later, I run into a nest of lions. Great big ones. Now one lion comes charging out of the brush after me. So I pick up my trusty rifle, and boom, I let him have it right between the eyes. Killed him, huh? No, no, but gave him a dickens of a headache. Well, then a little later, another lion comes chasing out of the brush. This is a long him, story. Charging down. Yeah. Again, I pick up my trusty rifle. I need a good bar trick, so No I'm bullets! Now the lion is coming down, he's charging down on me. I reach out, I grab a big handful of yours, and I throw it and kill him dead. Wait a minute. A handful of yours? Yeah, I reach out and grab a handful of yours. A handful of yours? yours? What's yours? Bourbon and soda. Oh, now that's a God. joke of, you know, <clears throat> the, the colloquialism of the time. Yeah. Everyone goes, what's yours? What's yours? And it means, what's your drink? What do you always get? Oh, and he goes, bourbon and soda. Yeah, that's his funny, funny joke. So can I tell you about this bar trick I did? I went to a bar the other day, and I said, bartender, he goes, what do you want? I go, I want to do a bar trick. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm 22 years old. <laughs> I had a Henny now, Young. I told you about this uh, Umberto Scali, who right. was um, the, um, uh, the actor. He was in Glenn or Glenda. Do you know? Sure, I know that. Glenn movie. or Glenda. It's an Ed Wood film. He played the sweater. Uh, Glenn or Glenda, you know, that Edward was a cross-dresser. I've never seen the film, but I, I understand that that's what it was all about. Oh, by the way, what Lenny's doing right now is he is uh, ex he's using his power to see this girl naked. Let me see your legs. She's new. She wants to be a dancer. She says, maybe, maybe you can be. I don't know. If you're good enough, you got to audition for me. Okay. What are you, stupid or something? <laughs> Do you think you're going to wear this out there? These guys... Do you think if Lenny Bruce uh, lived to be 80, he would also be go uh, facing trial? It, oh, like... like uh, Bill Cosby. Uh, Cosby? Yeah. Oh, you had a very good tweet uh, for Cosby. Uh, you said that the lawyer was asleep. You tell, tell your tweet. Well, this is before the verdict came out, but I read that his <laughs> uh, attorney fell asleep. And I said, Bill Cosby's and, attorney uh, fell asleep during trial. That's going into my act, thought Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that when I heard that. Like, I could see his thought bubble. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, anyone like comedian would be like, that's going into the act. Oh, she yeah. is taking off her clothes. 
Okay, look, we almost see oh, boobs. They cut there. it. Yeah. You see how it jump cut? Who now, owns I don't that know footage? why. Okay, this is not the original that was in the grindhouses in 53. This is a like a print of a print of a print or something. Right. This thing was almost lost, um, which wouldn't have been so terrible. But, um, okay, Screen Classics Incorporated was the distributor and producer. Um, it was a, uh, they just dumped it into the grindhouse circuit where it sank without a trace. The film lapsed into public domain and has been bootlegged over the years. Scratchy prints, several generations from the original source, they're all that remain. Uh, Lenny Bruce and George Weiss were sort of like comedian. All of this stuff we're seeing right here is not for anything, but just to show you girls in the right, changing getting dressed room. while we talk over which, it. So you which know, was a fantasy of. But there's a scene where she takes off her shirt, and that scene got cut from the original. Like some some projection is is like I'm keeping this clip clip. He probably took it home with him, and he strings like eighty of eight of them together. <laughs> Now, look, uh, they've the, left um, their drinks. The punchy's pretending. Gulp. Now, punchy even switches chairs. Right? He couldn't reach it. Gulp. Ah, uh, punchy. So now, here comes our undercover cop, and he's offering to buy punchy a drink. And Punchy's no fool, although Punchy's a fool. And Punchy's like, no one buys Punchy a drink unless they want information. Unless they're five zero. Oh, okay. I'll rap for you. So he he um, pretends that he's a seaman, and it's not the perverted kind. <laughs> and you mean Ice one, Pick yeah. is going to come over. Yeah, he's a merchant marine. No, merchant, I don't know. Merchant sailor. He's a seaman. All so right. he's just trying to say, like, I want to move. I'm, I'm looking to move illegal contraband. Uh, would you know <laughs> where I'd do it? You know, stuff like that. And I'm not he's a pretending cop. to be a ship. Right. You may think I'm a cop, but no way. <laughs> I'm actually just a seaman. Well, last week I pretended I was a helicopter flight. I mean. There's Ice Pick. Ice Pick. And, uh, yeah. Punchy knows to leave when the heavy Ice Pick's around. He goes, hey, I know you. You were on this and ship and that ship. And the pol cop is like, oh, holy cow, my good luck, this idiot. He goes, yeah, that's right. I'm just a regular, I'm not even a cop. I don't even know policemen. Here, have a seat, sucker. I, I mean, I know cops are handsome, and I know <laughs> that they're uh, great in bed, but I, I'm not a cop. <laughs> I just know what I know. I'm, now, Lenny Bruce was born Leonard Alfred Schneider in Mineola, Long Island. Another fun thing about him, I guess he got pretty famous because he's on the cover of Beatles' uh, Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band. And the people that are on the cover there are like Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, you have to be like big time Humphrey to get on there. Po yeah. Now, that was 66. He dies in 65. And he came to fame with the Seven Dirty Words in 64. No, no, no. You're so thinking, I you're, guess you're thinking of pretty, Carlin. Car What's Carlin that? did seven dirty words. He, I think, he said the word masturbation, and uh, that got into an obscenity charge. Right, Car right. George Carlin said the seven dirty words. Right. Lenny Bruce didn't. Carlin followed Bruce's lead there, didn't he? Yeah. Because before I that, have you seen Carlin when he was short haired and on? Um, yeah, when he was uh, black and white TV and yeah, sure. He had it like a sharp little suit and short hair and uh, yeah. Yeah, and there wasn't any hippie stuff at all, which makes sense. It completely makes sense. But well, Lenny he, Bruce paved the way. Right. Okay, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a way of putting it. I, I mean, I, I do like Lenny Bruce, and I listen to You know, there's some comics you see that takes a while to go, oh, my God, this guy is funny. 
you know what I mean? Like, I, mm-hmm. I'm sure you must have seen a comic that the comedians in the back of the room are like, this guy is a genius. And you're like, I don't know what's right. going on. And oh, yeah. uh, then it hits you. You're like, I see what this guy's doing. This is really fucking funny. And you just can't shake that off. And I feel the same with Lenny Bruce is that he's a little, it took me a while to kind of get – some of the bits are like just fucking classic. And then some of the audio – because, you know, you try to listen to as much audio as possible. Right. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what Pandora was playing, but – you know when he uh, when he was in suffering from the trial and all this stuff, and he was incoherent. You know. Yeah, I, that's when you said that. I knew exactly what you're talking about because it gets up there and goes. Ah, I tell you, man, he's got this uh, fly catch, you know, and he was, uh, and I'm like, what, what? And I would rewind it to hear again. Oh, we're gonna have a great exploitation scene now. It's gonna be um, a cat fight. So this is Maxine at the bar, and said you had like, she wants a gin and Mrs. orange. Sally said you had enough to and they're drink. like, you've had enough. You've got to leave. So Sally, so Sally Bruce plays Sally, uh, Lady Sally. Neither of these are Lenny Bruce's uh, wife. It's right. just a fight. Her name's Speaking Maxine, but it's a coincidence. Look, All they're, right, they're Look, play fighting. They're, they're yeah. doing a better job than Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce killed a man with lesser than this. Right. Ow. 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 They're like professional rest. Look what the bartender's doing. The yeah, bartender's yeah. taking photos of the skirt. Oh. Okay, guys. I just came. Get Knock it off. <laughs> You're right. After he squirts. Okay. <laughs> That's enough. I've had enough of this. Ugh. All right. Now I had enough. Uh, now she's just beating up men now. This is yeah. insane. All right, all now, right. Come on. Ice pick, where it. are you taking me? Break it up. Break it up. How did he get the nickname Ice Pick? He really uses an Ice Pick to kill a man. Is that how he really has a nickname? I don't buy it. Ice Pick? I'm not sure. Okay, here are the cops waiting to meet their undercover uh, dude, and they're going to be very happy and surprised with how much success he's had. Okay. Now, they're very stupid to meet at the club, duh. Also, to smoke oh, cigarettes, too, because you could, you could tell those are cop smokes, you know, when you're tracking this cops. Is, oh, wait. It says it's warehouse number one. Oh. The secret meeting. The dance hall is in warehouse number three. It's two warehouses. Yeah. I, I was like, warehouse? They're like over over there. And I said, <laughs> no, no, no. I used to oh, – I wrote a joke where uh, I used to taunt werewolves by going, werewolf? Where? Wolf? Werewolf. Like, ah. Uh, that reminds me of Young Frankenstein. What was his bit? Um, I, I don't know. They, it was it was Igor. It was drive, driving Froderick Frankenstein, right, to the... Oh, right. And he's going, oh, there's a wolf. And he goes, there, werewolf. Oh, there, castle. And he, he says, why are you talking like that? Oh, I thought you wanted me to. <laughs> I'm easy. All right, so this is great. Like, I love how the the thug puts on the tuxedo uh, jacket of his boss. Yeah. And it goes back to that paper. Got to read high of Lois. I think Lois What's is violent now for divorce. Is, um, Umberto is saying, did you do this? Did you do that? And Lenny Bruce is ignoring him going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the problem with today's so youth is mad. that they're hooked on that newspaper. Yeah. Right? It's newspaper yes. before family. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, let's give a listen if you want. All right. Did you put the cat in? Yeah, boss. Is that code word? Yeah, boss. Well, which is it, in or out? <laughs> See, I'm sorry, I got all hung up here. This is the most crazy story. It's about a space guy coming down on a beam. Forget the beam. It's free. Forget the beam. Are you sure everything's beam. right for the party? Sure, I'm sure. He's the reading the National Enquirer. He's not even reading the real newspaper. <laughs> what an He's asshole. looking at the naked natives. So um, the, a party's coming, and the party is the guy who's got a quarter million dollars, which back then was like a million, in bullion is getting out of jail. He's served his time, like 15 years or something, kept his mouth shut, and now they're going to throw him a party and try to find out where the money is. Oh, all right. <clears throat> now, look. I don't understand, like, why Lenny Bruce wrote the scene this way. That's all they're establishing is that a big party is coming. So why did he have to do – okay, now here comes Ice Pick, and it's another dumb thing. 
Ice Pick says he wants to get married, and this father-in-law is going to give him a job in a factory. So he's asking Umberto if he could leave the business. And, like, Umberto's like, yeah, sure, here's some severance. It doesn't make any sense. Do they offer uh, health insurance? Yes. And what I'm saying is it doesn't make sense because there's not even doing exploiting. Like, why would Lenny write these scenes? And look how bad he's acting. Uh... Yeah. No, oh, let's hear let's hear some of this. Acting. Okay. You can okay. Go. I'll even send you a wedding present. Well, I hope you use our registry. Because I would <laughs> Thanks, hate to have boss. two rolling pins. Now, this was Lenny Bruce's only success as, I wouldn't even call it success, his attempt in the movie star. Oh, there's Lenny Bruce's mom. No good at all. In fact. So, up, oh, ha ha, he's bald. Yeah, he's wearing a toupee. <laughs> and he, don't forget toupee for those things. <laughs> that's, um, what, that's what they say when you walk out of the store, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, they kill the guy who accuses uh, the people of stealing. And then they go to the woman who stole from her, from him, and like, you know we get our cut. You'll see. Okay, so Lenny Bruce had three attempts to get into the movies, all of which failed. This was the only thing that worked for him. He wrote a burlesque comedy called Dream Follies, and his mother, Sally Marr, starred in it, uh-huh. and he had an unbilled bit part. Phil, Phil Tucker also directed that piece of crap. Oh, look. I know. I've been looking. More naked. We're watching. We're in the girls' dressing room, and Carl's talking. See, it was a fantasy of guys back then to. Be back I wish stage. I could see in the girls' dressing room. So now <laughs> they get to. Which you know they're they're uh, well they're dancers they're not strippers right so it's not like. They're yeah they're yeah they're not strippers they're dancing with. Now look, he's going. Come on, Ice Pick. She he hears that Ice Pick's getting married, so he's going to try to. She's going to try to. Oh. Kiss him, and she's like, "Come on, my zipper's stuck." Oh, I see. And she's he's like, "It's not pick. stuck." How did he get the nickname then, Ice Pick? Mm, oh, there I we don't go. know. So much for marriage. Hey, I'm, getting, I'm married. getting married. The hell you are! Come on, don't be an ice dick. <laughs> 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 you should meet Mrs. V, Mrs. Uh, ice Pick to be. <laughs> to be an ice stick. No bird. <laughs> ice pick is back upstairs. Um, oh, you gotta help and, me, honey. And this is. Remember, I told you about a guy who said he's get got robbed. It just coincidentally, it's gonna pop up now. Okay, so Rocket Man in 1953. Um, Lenny Bruce collaborated on that screenplay. By the way. And it was released by 20th Century Fox. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, and Lenny Bruce was not asked to be in the cast. Damn it! It was Harlan Williams. That was also a Disney movie with uh, Harlan Williams no, as no. an astronaut. Rocket well, Man. you're talking about a different... Rocket Man in 53. It's about this boy. He got a, a, an alien Man gave him a special gun. 97. And when he fired it... What? Yeah, okay. I, I'm thinking of the different Rocket Man. Does he fart in a, in a spacesuit makes a big ripple? I only know that Robin Williams had a film. I don't know the details. No, no, this isn't Robin Williams. This is a Disney film from with uh, Harlan Williams. Harlan. Oh, I don't know. There was the Rocketeer. That's not what you're talking about. No, Rocketeer uh, was like 1940s, and there was like Nazis. And he's like, I got a flying yeah. suit, and I'm going to punch Nazis. And the movie bombed. They're trying to go back to Hawaii here. Oh, yeah. Make a little money. 
Why is he just going south of the Hawaii. border? Oh, they're better. Uh, <laughs> just like that. Yeah. It's the same shot from the beginning of the movie. No, it's different people. Oh, they're wearing different shirts? <laughs> Hawaii. Big Island. Talk about Big Island. So Rocket Man did average business at the box office, but uh, they ripped off Phil Tucker. They didn't give him his money, and Lenny Bruce didn't get to be in the damn thing. Uh, and so, like, it was a success that neither of them got to enjoy. Gotcha. So he he also tried to get financing for this movie called The Leather Jacket he wanted to make, but I don't know. They shot some test footage for it. It was aborted. I don't know. He basically didn't get into the movie. Well, this this grindhouse appearance was... Okay, so this is the guy like, hey, I came in here with $500. Now I'm leaving with nothing. Something's up. Wait, he Someone came in with $500 me. in 1953? I'll tell you what's yeah. up, man. It's walking around with that much money. Go to Tiffany's. Don't go to fucking dance hall. Right. So he's like, I know people. I'll make trouble for you. So he's like, wait here, sir. We don't want any. We don't want you to make any trouble. Oh, yeah, ice pick. Can you come in here, please? Right. Ice oh, pick. Bone ice crusher. Pick. Is this your henchman nose pick? It's ice pick. <laughs> There'll be such a nice your dick. eyes, not eyes, ice. Do you have an ice pick on you? It's a nickname. Oh, uh, no, it's not ice pick. It's Vincent. Vincent. It's Lenny Bruce. Yeah. What do you say there, mister? I'm Lenny Bruce. Here we go. This is like, uh, Let's uh, listen. Vincent. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, maybe I think you're right there. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> You're going to close this down, huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> killing. Wow, that was Get pretty violent. Here. Oh, you're going to close this down, eh? I just stabbed a rubber knife in your belly. Oh, and now we're walking off screen. Oh. You know what's really funny about this um, Umberto Scali? He's a character... That name and that person and this actor. He was in another movie. It was a female wrestler pick called Racket Girls. <laughs> and they were both produced by George Weiss, you know, the guy who produced this one. So it's another so, Racket movie with the same guy playing yeah. the same character. And it's, and Umberto Scali was in that. So this is like part two for him. It's weird. Lenny Bruce, was, was he on like the Ed Sullivan show? Was he on uh, Dick Cavett? Was he on, like, no. television? No. He, yes. Lenny Bruce appeared on television. Neither of those shows. Yes. Lenny Bruce was a big deal for about two years, and he started, you know. He would be on the in craft. In 64, he hour. was swearing during a nightclub performance, and he spent several months in prison. Nuts. Wow, that's crazy. Now, they, they were at the court. Uh, the prosecuting attorney was reading quotes. And Lenny said, look, let me just do my act for the jury. Otherwise, it's out of context. They can't understand the words. But the, that they refused. And uh, his, his, his career was pretty much over. If he was booked in a club in the country, the police, the local police would get to know about it. And they would, they would threaten to arrest the owner if he had him on. So in August of 66, I said 65. I was wrong. It, it, it's written here. August of 66, with his career in shambles, Lenny Bruce was found dead of a drug overdose in his home. Wow. And I don't think it was Tylenol. Yeah, yeah, that was a drug of choice. Okay, so now here's the woman who stole the 500 buck, <clears throat> And she's like, I didn't steal any money. And you think Umberto's going to be like, you can't steal money, but he doesn't. He goes, if you steal money, we get a cut. <laughs> Don't try to rip me off. Oh, he smacked her. Now, Let's as you and I both believe in our heart of hearts, there's nothing wrong.
No, oh, oh, they're really wow. mis- they, he, She got kicked in the butt. Give oh, us the money. Money kicks in the butt. Give us the they're money. They're roughing up women. And he goes, let me search you for the money. I'll start with I searching your boobs. That's pretty threatening, except for the boob part. Same boob. Uh-oh. Oh, the oh knife. I got the knife. the knife. I don't know. Maybe it's I will trick. bloodlessly kill you. I will stab this rubber knife into your chest. Let Uh-oh. He's, he is. He's, he's cutting her dress. Here. Gross. Look how he's hold. Oh, uh, they see how it cut away? Yeah, they some, some projectionist like took that boob. scene home. What? Some projectionist cut that scene and uh, jerked it at home with it. Well, I think for the second time in a row, we were not permitted to see boobs. What a racket. Store. Now, if you were a clerk in a department store. Dance hall rackless. No boobies will be shown in dance hall rackless. <laughs> See the... <coughs> Up, back to Hawaii. Oh, yeah, they're still making out. Oh, Whoa, no, they moved the plants. Hey, hey bring yeah, Hawaii back. Can I have a little privacy around here? Sorry, it's pretty busy tonight. Oh, Oh, like they didn't notice them kissing beforehand. Now, this guy is a weirdo. This guy buys tickets every night, but he doesn't spend them on dances. He just keeps them and brings them home because his fantasy is to get enough tickets so he can shut the place down and just have all the girls do himself. No other patrons in the whole place. Uh-huh. Just him dancing with girls. Oh. Him and 20 girls. And he just gives out tickets and dances. And then they just... Okay. Let's listen to his idiotic plot. I'm going to for one night. Then I'm not going to let anybody else come up here. I'm going to dance with all them girls all by myself. All night long. What a beautiful thought. Kind it's of good to have somehow. goals. You know, they can say what they want to, but I like you. You know, you think big. You know what I mean? You think big, big. Yeah, I think big. It's actually you know, so horrible. I'm going to make a trip to Hawaii <laughs> every 15 minutes on the dock. Every 15 minutes is going to get the every kiss and go. Every 15 minutes. He's like waiting for the guy's <laughs> line. <laughs> so I just can't believe it. They're like, and roll them. Hey, well, okay, here's so- the comedy. Here's the sketch. Uh, I'm going to spend every 15 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Every 15 minutes? Yeah, every 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See? Doing what? Oh, uh, what's that my line? My cue? Okay. Now look. Oh, she's taking Tom. her dress. We get to see the mirror. She's taking her bra off. There's backside. It's, Back, I mean. It's that's full backle nudity. She's got some broad shoulders. All right, there we go. Phew. Well, all broads have broad shoulders. Uh, you know, what a lucky guy. He gets to walk in. See, uh, see? I see a girl naked in there. Wow. See? Can you believe that the customers of the dance hall are perverts? No, it's hard to believe. Now she's going to notice him. Hey! You got to pay for this. Well, she should notice soon. Look at these boobs. Wow. Well, I guess the only dry wet part she needed to do... Uh, doff. Oh, there we go. Her shoulders. Hey! You come in here, you! The original peeping town. I never did this before, honest. Well, this is one time you shouldn't have done it at all. I won't do it again, I, I promise. I'll say you won't. Wait, I tell Mr. Scully. You don't have to tell him. Uh, I won't do it again. Can't you just let it go? How are these two actors related to Lenny Bruce again? Why are they on the screen? I don't know, but listen, because she's going to oh, yeah, she's going to blackmail him, him for all his tickets. All my tickets that I've been saving? <laughs> Shall I call Mr. Skelly? No, no, don't do that. He won't let me come up here anymore. Well, what's the argument? Give me the ticket. But I don't have them with me right now. Well, give me what you had and bring the rest tomorrow night. 
All right, if I have to. Shall I let Mr. Scully decide that? No, no, here, here's the tickets. Here. <laughs> Now, I'll now look, get to go to she's Hawaii. a meanie, you think, right? Right. But she's uh, about to give her him a little charity. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fade out. Here he is, the man of the hour, the guy who has a quarter million in bullion, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. With a bow tie and a hat. Look at him, he's like four foot five. Not with that hat on. No, the hat's an existed. Now, the reason he uh, doesn't speak is to not tell anybody where the bullion is. He cut out his own tongue. Oh, that's so bad. Now, here's our undercover cop, and he's with uh, Sally, the mother of Lenny Bruce, who's really being. He, she's telling him how he cut his tongue out. Oh, boy. Was she told boy, to act she, drunk? She doesn't right. need to act, Mike. She's <laughs> a bum. Look, could you act like you're drunk? Okay, and... Yeah, give me a few drinks. And action. Oh, no, Ms. Ms. Marr, you don't need to act drunk until we say roll them, okay? <laughs> now she's doing, okay, this is the Charleston. Yeah. And, that, you know, 1920s was just behind us, right? Right, at this yeah, point. it was 30 years. But she's doing a comic Charleston, the internet tells me. This is, everyone who is watching this in the day and knows what the Charleston is, is going, ha, 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 ha. I don't know why it's funny, but she's... It's, she puts her hands on her knees, and then when she shakes her knees, it looks like her hands are going across her knees. And look, she's waving around her pearls. Hula hoop uh, necklace. Yeah. So apparently the Charleston, like she's doing joke See, things about the Charleston. Like, like this. doing it wrong or something. We wouldn't know. Because we just take this as face value. Like, that must be the Charleston. Oh, your comedic Charleston warms my heart. And now, a Super 8 video about a cat. It's hysterical. Oh, hello. Da-da, here's Holly. Lenny Bruce. It's, uh, what is it, cuck cold? Is that what it's called when you, uh, when, when your you, wife is... She will, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, so now... Lenny's like, ah, oh, it's okay, it's just a film. <laughs> now Lenny's going to get annoyed with this guy and, like, fight him. Because he's a hothead, this Vincent. Vincent. Ah, get out hey. of hey. He just touches the guy and he falls face down. Oh, and there's, like, 15 people <gasps> on the table. I'm sorry, that Vincent, I so forgot your superpower. Right. He's like, okay, I won't cause you any trouble. Vince is like, yeah, that settles that. That that cleans that up. Okay, now you want to hear this because our stand-up comedian can do his one joke. Flip, ladies right. and gentlemen. And now I like to do my version of the Tahitian love dance. Now you mentioned National Geographic. They went to Tahiti and there were native peoples and everybody knew about that back then and that's a joke. Man, all I can imagine is like Lenny Bruce must know a lot of performers, right? And he's like, I'm going to make a movie. And then all his performer friends are like, well, Lenny, you should put me in your movie. I could be a comic. And they're like, oh, no, no, I have this vision. And then they watch it. It's like, why'd you put that fucking drunk Swedish guy on? I could have done something funnier. That drunk Swedish guy did go on to be a member of um, uh, Spike Jones, the Spike Jones show in 1954. Oh, that makes he sense. He was a cast player. But then he didn't do anything else until 2001 through 2003. He was on The Man Show. Oh, interesting. So he was like one of yeah. those old guys in The Man Show. Okay, now look at Vincent. He's got a gun. And he's like, come on, Umberto, give me the, I don't know, the diamonds or something.
Oh, he did. He stabbed him. Oh, no, he shot him. Like, did now, you, oh. The cop hears it. The cop has a gun. Why right. did the cop have a gun? Well, why didn't Lenny Bruce kill the guy? Because Lenny Bruce wrote it. No, Lenny Bruce came to get Mr. 250000 in bullion. And oh, he, he wants some out of here. Come here with me, you, you. Bring the lay. No, you're going to need the lay. Bring it. <laughs> That's the necklace. The I know I a lot of Hawaii in this movie. Now we, yeah, that's right. Now we are racing towards the end here. Right, we, we have will a minute have to go. A shootout with the cop. Oh no! So they're going to get shot at the end. Well, Lenny, I shouldn't ruin it for you, but I'm going to. Will crime pay, Carl? This movie from 1953. Will crime pay? Well, crime pays until you die. Like it pays very well, and then you die. Right. So. So the answer is yes, crime pays. Yes. Well, the, the trick is, is not to watch the first two and the last two minutes of any crime film from the 1950s, and then crime pays. Yeah. Oh. Like Johnny Dangerously. Well, it paid a little. I just got shot There's... in my white shirt. Where in his white shirt yeah. did he get shot? Bloodless. I can't see. Bloodless white shirt. <laughs> the end. Some story. Well, um, after Scally got killed and, and Vinny got killed, Vinny. what happened to the Nance Hall? Well, this Nancy. fellow Burke took it over. I see. Well, uh, is he running it now? Well, he's running it all right right yeah, now. He's so right, yeah. The dance hall is so much as a thing. One thing. Going around the road, the customs keeps going all the time. Thanks a lot for the story, Inspector. I'm Thanks sure a lot for that enough. shitty fucking story, <laughs> Inspector. <laughs> yeah. And Fuck the thing you. is, if it's really a story, how there would be details you couldn't know. <laughs> you know, like what this one said to that one behind a closed door. And that story took 56 minutes. Some great right. Yeah, you that's a fucking going, long story. And then they said, do you want to have a trip to Hawaii? Really, officer? Yes. And they pulled over a potted plant. Uh-huh. I mean, we wouldn't know this stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, that potted plant covered that kissing couple. They could have got away with it. Right. How so- about a little privacy? <laughs> All right, Carl. Hey, uh, this is episode 99. Uh, wow. Yeah. And so I'm really excited to let you guys know that uh, next week's show will be our 100th. Make mine a 99. And I want to let you know what the movie is next week. See if I can find yes, a trailer. Uh, it is... Huh. Let me see if I can find... Hang on. I thought that I could see the trailer. Okay, here we go. Uh, Carl, next week we're going to be watching National Lampoon's Adam and Eve from 2008. National Lampoon, Adam and Eve. That's from 2008. 2008. I found it broken into four parts, so I'm hoping it's the actual full-length movie. Really? Don't you want to do like a full-length, full-length, full-length? It is full, well. I, <laughs> I know it's literally full length. We're gonna have to do four counts. I mean, it, it'll, it'll survive. It's we'll survive. If it's podcast, not live. Right. But it is gonna be four. I'll make I'll make a playlist. I promise you. We'll I'll make all a, hang out. Well, here here's the trailer. You are only in college once. You're missing out on all the good stuff. <laughs> First came National Lampoon's Animal House. Then First came National Animal Lampoon's House. Van Wilder. Then came Van Wilder. Oh, no vacation. Who's just in here? Ferguson. <laughs> now, National Lampoon presents a new comedy about what it's like to date. I'm a virgin. A girl who wants to wait. <laughs> That's funny. This is our senior year. I can't be abstinent my senior year. I just want to be sure, Adam. I've never felt this way before. (laughs) Are you mad at me? Maybe I am a little bit frustrated. Hey, Baker, what are you doing in there? Oh, yeah. He's jerking off. From the director of Revenge of the Nerds. I love you. That's what they want to hear. You're absolutely right. Full throttle romance. And if she doesn't go for it, she leaves me no choice. No, wait, no. 
Think about baseball, it helps. Starring that hot chick from Wrong Turn, the blonde from Entourage, that guy from The Fast and the Furious, and Hollywood royalty's next generation, Cameron Douglas and Jake Hoffman. Bring in a specimen tomorrow. Give me a sip. You won't like this kind, trust me. Is that a pale ale or something? National Lampoon's He drank his piss. I keep my pants oh, on really? even in the most tempting situations. Coming soon to theaters. Coming soon to theaters, Carl. It's funny how they were honest. They were like, that guy from Entourage. That hot blonde <laughs> from... <laughs> well, you know, the, the, that hot girl from uh, One Wrong Turn is actually Sloane from Entourage. So there's two hot girls from Entourage in this uh-huh. movie. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, what we'll be watching for our 100th movie. <laughs> I see it broken down into two, uh, four parts. Uh, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we can, uh, I'm sure it's a full night. Then if not, we'll have a surprise movie. How about that? I'll let you know. <laughs> no, let's stick with this. Cause I'm going to start researching. But the thing is we just call, record, we could record Paul going three, two, one, and then we'll use him over, cause he won't hang out. We can use him over and over. Well, you know, I'd like to say, if you like to give us a shout out, can you send us on our Twitter feed? Respond to us. We're L W A F L M O Y T. 